Hello. Good afternoon or good morning or good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, yeah, welcome to our live stream. Right, I'm going to go through all our checks as normal. Let's hope everything is working fine. Yeah, can hear everything, can see everything absolutely fine. So let's get and do a little bit of scroll soaring. I'll just bring my um, super glue across. Here we are. We just bring that across because we're going to need that. We're making today, or we're demonstrating for you all to see how to make a Celtic themed box. So we've got all of the different parts marked out. That one there is going to be the backing board to our lid. That's going to be the lid itself. There's a thin piece of wood already super glued to the main body of the box. So that's going to be the main body of the box and the piece that goes on the lid. And then that one there is going to be our base. So there we are. That's what we're working on. So first part of the process is to do our pierce work. So we're going to just cut out these internal bits. We've got one, two, three, four pieces of pierce work to do. There's going to be some hand carving in this process as well. And, um, oh, I'm thinking Tom's wood carver's got the, uh, he's got the band saw and the scroll saw going there at the same time. Uh, so yeah, um, we're going to cut those things out and demonstrate for you all to see the process of how we go about making a Celtic box. Any questions as we go along through the process, get them into us. Any thoughts as well, feel free to ask. And uh, I'm looking now, I can't see if, we, if there are anybody, if there's anybody watching, just give us a, a quick comment just so I can check that everything is working as it should be. Other than that, I shall get scroll soaring. Brilliant, I will check that comment now. Sorry, I just knocked the uh, camera turning around, but uh, yeah, I'll get started and cut something out.
so as we're starting this process, um, it's just worth pausing for a second. I'll check those uh, comments that we got on there as well. But it's just worth pa pausing for uh, a second because all of this, as we're going through this process of cutting out, um, when you're making a box, then it all has to be done really in a specific order. So I start off with doing the pierce work first of all, because when I go to do the cutting the outline, um, Thomas Woodcarver just coming past. Um, so yeah, when I go to cut the outline, we want this backing board on there. So what I will actually do, do all of the pierce work on the top layer, and then when we put this backing board on, we will just cut the outline. So that's the set order that it has to be done in. The next part of the process then will be working on that main body of the box where we cut out the recess, but then we'll cut out a second piece of wood that's stuck to the bottom and that sticks to our lids. So the lids will sort of stay inside the box. And then the final part of cutting out will be cutting out the base and the main body of the box at the same time. So I tend to use quite a set order for, for doing things. Um, Shamai Dai, hello Chris. It is working and the carver as well, hello all. Hello all indeed and thank you for, for joining us. So this one here, yeah, a Celtic themed design. One that I designed years ago, but I actually redrew it because the woods, when I was looking around for the wood to do this one, to demonstrate this, Everything that I was finding was a little bit smaller than the original design. So I thought instead of looking and using wood that is a bit larger, I thought I'd just make the design itself a little bit smaller. So that's what I did. I'm finding as well, I'm using the goggles as well as the visor. It's just looking after my eyes a little bit, reducing the amount of dust that I seem to be picking up in and around the eyes. So uh, yeah, just different things that I try and... Um, Seems to be working quite well. Takes longer to put everything on though. Can I, can I come in with my tip for the week? It's it's not politics, is it? It isn't politics. Go on then. Is it? It's not to do with electricity companies either, is it? Well, there's That's two it. two of these. Look. Right. If you want to take one of those, I'll okay. take the other one that I've done as well. Okay. So Thomas Woodcarver has got two of these. This is my tip for the week now. So we'd have to do a, a weekly segment, Thomas Woodcarver's tip for the week. Um, so he's just showing us, he's got two pieces of oak. Yeah, and a third one, just yeah. like so. My tip for the week is... Yeah. Don't try and skimp and save like I just did. Right. Because I tried, there was a blade already in. I yeah, I, I, right. I've noticed this. This is yeah. This is very relevant. I've noticed that Thomas Woodcarver, with it, with, because we're using stack cutting a lot, and um, Thomas Woodcarver's still using the same method as we used before, and is trying to use the blades to the bitter end. Hmm. And after a while, when you, if you're using stack cutting or if you're cutting thicker wood, you do have to just accept that you're going to have to change the blade slightly more frequently. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're giving yourself a lot more cleanup, and that happens. Um, and it, it it burns. It's like I demonstrated. Well, no, no, what it is, it's not. Yeah. The, the Christmas tree. Yeah. You got? Is it on the wonk? It's a on bit the wonky. Wonk. Yeah. But this happened to me the other day as well when I was demonstrating cutting out those dog um, coasters. I knew I should probably change it, um, but again, you're trying to save a bit and you're trying to keep the blade going yeah. for a bit longer. And, and that one, there are three pieces of oak. False economy. I thing. thought the oak was slightly softer, softer than it was, yeah. and therefore... Hosh, you got Hoshi, 2012, hello, hello to everyone. Thomas Woodcarver needs his own channel. Yeah, he's got his own channel, if you look. Um, <laughs> Does you he? actually search, yeah, you've got your own channel. Well, um, so know, Thomas Woodcarver I... has got his own channel, his last upload, um, I'm thinking, was possibly in 2000 and maybe 2011. That was your last upload. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so there we are. So can anybody find that one? Have a look around. Have a hunt around. Put in Thomas Woodcarver on YouTube and you will find the original channel. So there you go. A little known fact. A little known fact of the day. Thomas Woodcarver has got a YouTube channel. Yeah, you, you, you did quite well on one video. Um, you love spoon carving demonstrations. So. Oh, very good. But the moral of the story is, 
Don't try and get away with it. Don't skimp. Put a new blade in. It'll save you in the long run. Yeah. Takes a lot longer putting the goggles on as well as everything else. Sorry, Dave. No, not at all. Right. Okay, so that's the pierce work done. Um, I'll just check, see if I've missed anything in there. Two seconds. Uh, his last upload was <laughs> Peter Mac. Yeah, indeed, it was. Um, it was the la one of the one of his last ones. I think there was a sort of bulk upload of maybe I don't know five six videos done, and. Um, this was many moons ago when he was doing do he did a few video uploads with my brother and then um, yeah they 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 had a bit of a, a run on it they did how to make a love spoon and uh, one that we've replicated a few times since and um, there is there is a plan at some stage I do plan on doing a uploaded well uploading a newer version I've got to make that video first then. Um, and he, he, the one got picked up by, the one video got picked up and it did have a, a few views to it. 
So, anybody wondering what we're going to do now? Just as well, I've got a bit of sandpaper here because uh, a little bit of roughness that we just take off the back edge. What it is, this, this is a backing piece to the lid for our box. And um, you may have noticed, being a Celtic nation here in Wales, I do enjoy a Celtic project and making something Celtic themed. So this one has that feature of the Celtic cross. And what I do is I super glue, oop, that's a bit too much. I'm gonna have to spread that round a bit. But I'm gonna super glue, let's drag that all around as much as we can. This onto the backing piece. And then we'll cut the two pieces out at the same time. Here we are, that's plenty of super glue. So we try and get the grain roughly in the same sort of direction. Stick that down like so. And while we're waiting for that one to dry off, I'll put it one side and I will get the body of the box. And the first thing we're gonna do with this one we're going to cut out the, this This will be cutting out the, the sort of body, the main body of the box, and also the piece that goes onto the back of the lid that will secure the lid in position. So the first thing I'll have to do, I'll have to do a little bit of feathering to get that into a nice shape, and then we go from there. Right, let's have a little look. Takes a moment, as I said, we've got more kit to put on now. I think maybe for my birthday present or something, we need to find a new mask that doesn't need the, the glasses behind it as well. Okay, I was going to cut a bit more off there just to sharpen up the finish on the edge, but it seems that seems pretty good actually. You'll see um, one thing you might pick up on is the the sort of dramatic difference, you know, in in the speed, the feed speed, as um, 
as you're cutting out that thicker piece of wood. One of those things where, um, in my mind, whenever I'm doing the boxes, I always remember actually breaking the, the piece that connects the, uh, the bottom arm to the motor. So it's always something that I'm trying my best not to, um, not to force it then. Let the, let the saw do the work for you. Um, what we're gonna have to do with this one, I'm just sanding over the inside of the box just to try and finish that more nicely. Um, and what we will be doing, see, we've got to take the piece off, take that small piece off. So I'll just grab a, a chisel and a mallet to take the piece off the back. <clears throat> Excuse me two seconds. Yeah, so where we've stuck that extra piece on for making this little round piece, we've got to take that now back off and we've got a super glue on a base. So, boom. there it goes. Right, seconds out, everything falling on the floor. Oh dear, that's the last is are down. Right, so, let's get it back on the camera for you all to see. We have a little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleaning up to do. I may actually, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put that back in the scroll saw and I'm just gonna tidy up that little bit of finish there, make it a little bit nicer on the finish. So bear with me two seconds while we do that. We just sharpened up, sharpened up that finish on the inside of the box, ready for now sticking the base on that so we can cut the base and the body of the box out at the same time. What I would do normally, if I wasn't doing this as a demonstration, I would um, use our oscillating sander to sand that on the inside nice and smooth and to get a nice rounded off finish on it as well. Right, let's have a little look. We missed something. Uh, what type of mask do I use? Right, the mask that I'm using, um, I am using an, uh, one that Trend used to do. And for no reason that I can think of, other than they weren't making enough money out of selling filters and things like that, because you don't really need to re keep replacing them to that degree. Um, it's an old Trend mask that they discontinued. And it, yeah, it does a good job. It filters the dust well. And when we ask the different people like Axminster Tools and people like that, that, that sell the kit here, they, they always said, yeah, it's as good a mask as you, you'll get. And it does a good job. Uh, but I got a vise, I put a visor on it. And the problem I was finding is that there's a lot of dust in and around your eyes. So I bought some glasses as well just to add a little bit of extra protection for your eyes. Right, so we've sanded around that a little bit. Could be better, as I said, it could be better, but for the purposes of this demonstration, it's not too bad. Now, that's gonna be our base. That's what we need to do. Line that up so the grain is going roughly in the same direction. That's the accelerant, our Starbond accelerant. And then just add, add our super glue to the base of the box, just like so. Line that grain up again. 
and then we'll have that sticking down just like so. Right, so while that is now drying off, we go back to our lid and we've got to cut out the surround of the lid on our box. And we need that little plate, so we need to keep hold of that one. Mask back on. Goggles two. I'm going to put them back together where they fell on the floor. And away we go. There we are, so that cuts out the lid. And now we've got the main body and base again. That we're gonna cut out. Just check I haven't missed anything from anyone. Um, oh, hello Jason. Hope all is well with you. Uh, Ray from Sunny and Albert. Here in West Wales, it is a beautiful, beautiful day. We're enjoying some very nice weather, thankfully. About time, but it's certainly lovely at the moment. Um, yeah, maybe wondering as well, recently I've been doing a number of Celtic projects, and as I always say with it, one of the reasons I do a lot of Celtic projects, they are great fun to do. And there's so many different ideas, so many different things that you can make. I'm just gonna sand as I'm going along, take that sharp edge. This is the sharp edge that's left over. It's not too bad, because it's that reverse tough blade. But where we got a little bit of sharpness, we just take it away. That as well, we'll work out for sticking that circle in position on the back as well. So that'll be the lid finished off.
I'll tell you what I'm going to check. I'm going to see if I got a number 12 blade on the uh, bench here. Because here's confession time. <sighs> Confessions, here we are. Right. Now, if I, I'm demonstrating this using the scroll saw. When I make these boxes for the workshop, because we do make not a huge number, but we do make boxes. Um, I'll tell you why we don't make a huge number of boxes is because they take up a lot of wood. But if I was going to make this for the workshop, um, other than demonstrating it for everybody to see, what I would actually do is to cut out the outline of the box. I do the lid would all be done using the scroll saw, but the main body of the box, because it's thicker, I'd cut it out on the band saw and then put it on the belt sander to smooth it all off. This hopefully gives you an idea, you know, what the uh, scroll saw, what it's capable of, what you can do with it. You know, it's more than capable of doing this. And the only limit in terms of the thickness is the throat size. But for a job like this, um, I think you're better off. I think you're better off using the band saw to, to cut it all out, uh, personal opinion, and use the belt sander then to refine the finish. Um, so yeah, confession time. Demonstrate one thing, we do another. Uh, yeah, Celtic symbols are the most beautiful thing to make something out of. Absolutely, out of Canada very much. Henry Scholes, hello Henry as well. Uh, miss you in there. Howdy everyone, hello Henry. Um, uh, really like it. Really, I like rain. Not every day, but it's nice. I hate hot weather. Um, you can live in Canada as yeah, well. Yeah, you sound well suited to Wales because uh, we have our more than our fair share of rain normally but we're actually enjoying a, a very nice spell of weather which is great all right let's finish off this light outline and let's see if that number 12 blade if it makes a difference Right, so that's the scroll saw work finished off. Um, you can see even off the scroll saw that I'd still put that on the belt sander, um, on the, the side attachment of the belt sander just to get a smoother finish. Um, even with using the number 12 blade, I would still prefer to be working with the band saw because it definitely is quicker. 
at, um, at doing that job. Right, just for you all to see as well, before we go across, um, let's have a little look here, before we go across to the carving, so that's gonna be the next part of the process. We're just gonna take off a little bit of sharpness on the edge. I'm gonna do a little bit of sanding on this plate that will sh hold the, uh, the box in position. So that's just what I'm doing here now. Just tidy that up a little bit. We've got a squirt of Starbond super glue. The accelerant and then a little bit of super glue just on that lid using up a bit too much if anything there and let's have a little look line it up try and get it roughly the best we can in the middle because when you're using that accelerant you don't really get two goes of this hopefully that's going to be just about right about there Dave, was it two dubs you want in our two christmas trees Two doves and a, a Christmas tree. There we are. Thomas Woodcar just sorting out a, a job for us there. Let's have a little look. Is this going to fall into position somewhere? Yeah. There we are. So that is going to be the finished box. And we've managed to get that pretty good. The symmetrical. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Um, across to the workbench now. So I'm going to move that camera. I'm going to move our lights across the workbench. And what we're going to do is we're going to hand carve it. I'm thinking about it, I'd have probably been better off leaving that until I hand carved it to stick it on. But there we are. You live and you learn. But it'll do the job. Right, since when do you make woodwork with the scroll saw? And the lanny. The lanny you have today. Right, since when? Okay, um, myself, I'll just move all this camera. I've got to move my camera, the lights, and the chair now. Um, myself, I started doing woodworking with the scroll saw. Um, wow, good question. Now you got me thinking. Okay, bear with me two seconds while we move everything across. I started using a scroll saw back in... Oof. 2000 and maybe 2000 and maybe 2000 2001 something like that somewhere around there I would say and um, it was just something that initially I guess I would have been doing wood carving that would be my first thing that I would have learned and um, I'll just move this seat out of the way and I'll just turn my computer just so I can see it. Okay, yeah. Oh, I forgot my chair. Bear with me two seconds. We get the chair. <clears throat> I started, yes, yeah, scroll saw, and I would have said around about 2000. And it was basically, it was a quicker way for us to cut out our wood carving project. Uh, originally, I remember Dad, well, going back, way, way back, back in the day, he had like um, a fret saw with like a foot pedal type thing. That was how he sort of originally had uh, access to it. And in the schools then, he taught, he taught evening classes in a local school. And so he'd seen in the schools the, the scroll saw, and it was Hegner's that they had there. But originally he bought a, um, let me think, I want to say record, it's not record, um, Delta, that's what it was. It was a Delta scroll saw, and he had problems then when it came to the Delta where the blades would drift and um, the quality of the cut, he just wasn't happy with it. And so he did his sort of research and things like that. And the one that he came across was the Hegner, the Hegner Multicuts 2S. And he bought one. He just lost OBS Studio. Let's try and get that back connected. There we are. Sorry about that. We may have lost us two seconds while I was adjusting the uh, camera. So hopefully we're back. Hopefully we're back online. That's just OBS Studio as we're moving the... Uh, camera along 
you might have lost us for a moment. So apologies if uh, you lost us. But yeah, that was how he sort of got into it, was where he, um, he, was, he was looking for a method for cutting out to speed things up, because up until then, he would have been using the coping saw. So that was how originally it came about. And then the scroll saw that you see me using, that's the original one that he that he bought. And then the one that you sometimes sh on. Um, so the main difference is that um, OBS Studio is reconnecting successfully. Sorry about this. Um, it's just where we're moving the, uh, the computer. We just lost it a few times there. So yeah, the... Um, the main the, the 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 main reason was to speed up that process of cutting out, and um, the the main difference between the two designs, the more modern, the newer design, and the older design, when it comes to the 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 scroll saws, that we found from a practical sense is the uh, the newer one uses like a hose. Uh, a purple hose as the blower to blow away the dust as the other one had like just a clear pipe. I know there would be other design things that would have been upgraded, but practically those are the main things that we notice. Right, have we missed any comments there? Probably people saying about losing us. Uh, what type of wood are you using? Best dependence, etc. etc. We go through that. Uh, put the scene in. How are you doing? Some um, yeah. Mark as well. Hello there. You've managed to catch us indeed. Um, I'm doing fine today, thanks. Right, the wood, uh, the wood that we're using, this one here that we're using is a little piece of juniper. When it comes to the pendants though, uh, it, again, I use all sorts for, for doing it. In the US, I believe that you refer to this as a uh, fragrant cedar, would it be? Uh, I think so. And it's got that beautiful color and from the name you use, it's got that beautiful perfume to it. But I use quite a wide variety of wood, so we use everything from oak, ash, sycamore, maple, teak. It's predominantly hardwoods we work in, um, because we find because we're back. Our background is is heavily involved with wood carving. They're better for for the carving that we do than than the softwoods. Uh, but when it comes to it, then we can recycle a lot of old furniture, fixtures, fittings, that sort of thing. We use a lot of timber that others don't want. So things that are being thrown away, basically. Over here, the, the fashion has gone towards lighter colored furniture. So it's amazing how much darker furniture, especially things like stained oak, people are throwing them away and not wanting them. And the wood, beautiful stuff. Um, here we are, things like mahogany. This is a love spoon I'm working on at the moment. You can see with the with the dragon there. Um, a lot of mahogany comes in window frames, door frames, that sort of thing, fixtures and fittings. Um, but basically, whatever, whatever we can get hold of it. And then when it comes to like the pendants, quite often. When we're making pendants, those are little tiny pieces of wood that are too small to make anything else from. Uh, years ago, we'd have, you know, we'd have been throwing those out and saying, oh, they're, they're no use for anything. But because we make the jewelry now, jewelry is great at using up all of those little scraps um, that otherwise, yeah, we would have been throwing in the bin. So perfect for those sorts of jobs. And that's why we demonstrate it, is to show how you can really use a wide wide variety of different things so now when it comes to doing the celtic weave we basically are trying to create that effect of it overlapping itself so we just carve out all of it to look as if it's going over and under we've got plenty of wood to work with on this particular piece he says I hope we have. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have. So we're just gonna carve everything in the one direction. And in terms of then techniques and things we use, you can hear Thomas the Woodcarver in the background there. So he's obviously, um, from the sound there, he's working on the router. And what he's doing, he is preparing uh, the spoons. 
So what we do, our methods, if you're interested in the, um, the spoon carving, anybody interested in having a go at that side of it, what we actually do, because we're making them on a daily basis, we're, we take the bulk of the bowl out using a router and a template. Um, we then cut a basic outline, so he's gone on to the bandsaw. So you can cut a basic outline using the bandsaw. We can then use um, the scroll saw again to further refine, do that pierce work, and then afterwards we do the hand carving. So the reason we use stuff like that is because we're doing it, you know, on a daily basis as our work, um, if you can save yourself a little bit of time using things like the router, it, it, it is a big save for us. So with this, as you'll see, we do all of that carving of the weave in the one direction. And whatever we do on the one side, we replicate on the other side. And then we'll turn the piece around and we'll do all of the carving in the opposite direction as well. There we are. So you can see that's starting to come together. As we proceed through the project, the, uh, the paper, we're getting rid of all of that paper. It's nice to see the grain, the character, the wood coming through. And then after, going on from there, after we've done that wood carving, after we've carved it all, we will then go on to the um, hand sanding and the hand finishing. So that is the, uh, yeah, the entire process. There we are. Just out of interest as well, everybody else, what are, what are you working on at the moment yourselves? Any projects that you're focusing on? Any new designs, new ideas? Um, if you're interested as well, if you're looking for projects to have a go at, we've just added um, a number of designs up on our website again. So if you're looking for a bit of inspiration, go to our scroll saw page on our website. There's a link in the description of a lot of the videos that we do. Because, um, yeah, we're, we're always sort of thinking up new ideas. Some of the projects as well that you'll see on there we haven't demonstrated yet. Um, as, as I've been saying, Celtic stuff has been taking up quite a bit of my recent um, sort of designing influence. Always something I seem to come back to. I seem to sort of go away from it a little bit and then come back to it. Because when it comes to the love spoons, Celtic design, that's very much a new, a newer thing. There's no link between the Celts and the Welsh love spoon tradition, but their design is perfect for it. I think we mentioned it last week. I think I was doing a Celtic project last week, but we use it a lot. And the idea see of the twist is representing binding, growing together. That's what they tell us. Right, so we've done a lot of the weave in the one direction. And we will start now on the other side. Before I turn it round, this one can be carved out while we're still facing the piece away from us. I tend to carve in this style where I do as much carving in the one direction as I can. Because I sit to carve, it means I've got to turn it round otherwise. I can see we've got a couple of comments there that are just, just behind my light. So I will check those and then turn the project round and go from there. What have we missed? Okay, the carver. Um, oh, is there a scroll saw workshop? Boxwood works really well for pendants. Yeah. Wow, the spoon. Yeah, that's coming on the spoon. Uh, oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, give it a go. Yeah, uh, but any woods that you that can take high detail when carving is good with pendants beyond that. Yeah, working on a bass fish, right, with two on it. Bass fish with two on it. And a couple of limbs underwater. Anyone striking a lure? Um, just bought a new set of chisels. Fantastic. With a few orders. Brilliant. With a few dozen of spoons and some other stuff. Not bad for a hobby. Fantastic. Brilliant. Glad to hear it, Mark. That sounds fantastic. Um, oh, I'm glad that 
glad that you're getting interest with the love spoons as well because it's the more the, the tradition develops, the more it grows, the more interest everyone takes in it, the better. That is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, with the with the pendants, um, yeah, boxwood is is a is a is a nice timber. You get a nice finish on the boxwood as well, and um, you it's it it's it's good as well because it's because it's so slow growing. The boxwoods, you know, the sort of size of pieces that you get, it's going to be within that sort of ballpark because it's. You don't very often, we don't anyway, we don't very often see the bigger pieces. Um, as well, we do a mix when it comes to pendants. Uh, it's a little bit sacrilege actually, but I've noticed there's a new feature in, in the YouTube studio. Here's one for the carver with your YouTube channel to have a little look at because there's a new feature that actually tells you what everybody who's watching your videos, what they're interested in videos you're making. And I'm actually gonna make a few videos that in some way is, is sacrilege for us because I'm gonna end up using pallet wood to make some projects from. So I may even do some pallet wood pendants. But basically the scroll saw, the blades, they're so fine and the machine that we use is so good that it can, it'll, it'll deal with that, no problem. But if you were asking me in terms of carving, pallet wood uh, no chance not interested in doing that but um, yeah it, it depends so see because you can we make pendants and pin badges that sort of thing where there's absolutely no carving whatsoever Thomas Woodcarvers will just walked in so I'll ask him um, any woods in particular you would recommend for making pendants and small items pendants and small items Pretty much, we use what the same stuff that we use for everything else, don't we? Uh, the carver said boxwood, which well, definitely boxwood, yeah. Which is, you know, is because of the size as well, isn't it? What, what was that? That one we had with the um, uh, fawning colour and quite the not lilac or something. No, it. it we had it from Yandles. What were some of the timbers we had from Yandles? I mean, we, we, from, there was a big debate Ro actually. Rapolo, Rapolo Lacewood. Yeah, um, that's Rapolo Lacewood. Yeah. Um, and, and for instance, I tell you what we tend to do. Yeah, that is another way of seeing it. That's a piece of Rapolo Lacewood. Um, and I actually saw a big argument about it where people, had, they were misidentifying it. Because do you remember years ago, we had that odd piece of mahogany that had a crazy grain on it? Yeah. And it was that that people were identifying as Rapolo Lacewood. Um, and I recognised what it was. It was a type of mahogany, and there is a specific name for it, which somebody will probably, uh, wonder, probably tell they me. Get, do they get the bird's eye maple? Bird's eye maple is a nice one In for America. it. Yeah, yeah bird's eye maple. Bird's eye maple. That'd be nice That's nice for jewellery. It's basically... What, what, going back to it, the reason like we made a lot of jewellery things and things like the Rapolo Lacewood is because you don't get much of it and you only generally see small pieces of it, yeah. so... And a bit of walnut. A walnut? Rose, walnut, rosewood. Rosewood, yeah. Yeah, all um, good for it. But we've used all sorts for... Yeah. yeah. All sorts of things like that. We've got Sammy in his boots coming through the door, yeah? You say hello to everyone, Sammy. Hello. Good boy. Here we are. We've been playing... Why have I got chicken? He's, he's spotted, don't kick it. He spotted that I've got a bag of chicken food hanging off my tripod. That's to feed the chickens, that is. Do you reckon the chickens are going to be fed there? Do you know why it's on there? Why do you think it's on there? It's just to weight that down. Though. It's a weight, see? So I got the chicken food as a weight so the tripod doesn't move about, see? What do you think? Is that clever? Yeah. There we are. Save, saving money, see, on buying a proper weight for it. There we are. Right, so you can see now, Sammy's off in his boots there, in his wellies. He's been kicking the football about. There we are, I will check as well. Have we missed anything on those comments? Keep them coming in. Let's have a look. Uh, there's, uh, there's plenty of hours. Thanks very much. Here we are. No, I think we're up to date. Tell us if we have missed anything, because, uh, yeah, we always do our best to keep up with the comments. 
Right, so we're just about, we've just about created that effect of the weave going over and under. Just like so. We've got these last two cuts at the top. And then there's how we sort of um, refine that weave in and out. So you can see that just goes under just like so. Same on the other side then, just like so. There we are. So we got those pretty clean and then what we do see, we're just gonna angle, that's actually going in the opposite direction of the grain there. So that's a good start, but yeah, we just take the sharpness off. That's what it was, I remember. Now as I'm doing this, I remember what I was doing last week. It was the Celtic clock, wasn't it? It was my little, my simple version of a Celtic clock because we do a much more, we got our demonstration coming up soon where we got a very elaborate Celtic clock. It's all filmed, but uh, not sure when it'll be uh, published on the channel. But something, something for you to keep an eye out for. Right, so this one here, just try and tidy up that there. It's just the grain, a little bit untidy. And I made a couple of these. I'm thinking it was during the um, during the pandemic, but we've sold them all now, so we haven't had. We've sold a lot of boxes recently. I wonder if there's anybody old enough listening to. I think it was Congo Bill. Congo Bill. Yeah. Doesn't sound like a Congolese name. So you'll see, we're just gonna shape it all in the one direction. Like so. Yeah, just two minutes, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be there now, yeah. You wanna check? Any thoughts on Congo, Bill? Do you wanna check in the comments section, see if there's anything Can you coming? About films? I can't see the... That's it, you'll have to go in from that angle. That was the only way I could get in. Have we missed any comments there as well? Where's that there? It just said disconnected. Mm -hmm. No, the S2 is reconnected. Sorry about that, it's just disconnected again. Who's on is gorgeous? Yeah, you get a lovely character. When you get dependence, you can sometimes lose the beauty of the grain. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, because it's smaller, you can sometimes lose the detail. The car was asking what is bird's eye maple? Bird's eye is where there's like the. Yeah. It's. Has somebody answered? It's, no. It's where you get like the little. Bird's eye maple is where you get like the little knots, isn't yeah, it? And you get all of the right. character. But yeah. that's the only thing, yeah, with using it, it for a pendant, the bird's eye maple. Um, Nobody's come up with Congo Bill yet? No, with the, with the bird's eye maple, because it's, you know, sometimes you lose that. It's, it's probably, it probably is in some, I don't know, it'd still make nice jewellery, it would. But it, you may lose, um, on a bigger piece, you can see it more clearly, can't you, I guess. But it's a lovely timber. Because that, because we use those two methods sometimes where we where we use, you know, make a pendant without any carving, it's not too bad for us. We sometimes carve them, we sometimes leave them to scroll sword. Right, well. Congo Bill was a was a, a matinee film. Right. Right? Okay. And um this is going back now, oh boys oh boys, 60, yeah, over 60 years ago. Okay. When they used to show the films. Yeah. And Congo Bill was the Saturday film. Yeah. And um, it would be something like, you know, Tarzan type of thing. Right. And you'd, you'd have to go back the following Saturday. You know, to find out what? You'd be hanging over the waterfall with a, 
crocodile uh, waiting to uh, eat him. him or something like that. And um, you'll have to go back next week then. So how does see this what happened to Congo Bill? How, how how does this relate to? Well, it relates because I have another. Oh, you got? Is this? Are you are you setting up? Thomas the Woodcarver, I think, is now setting up his tip for the week. Yeah. In a week, a week in advance. But he's got to come back next. So week. Every, everyone's got to come tip. back. Everybody's got to come back to next week's live stream because Thomas the Woodcarver has already got his tip. Yeah. For the week, for next week. I got the one. Look at this, Thomas the Woodcarver is turning into a he's turning into a YouTube pro. He's he's given up on trying to get us what do they call it? D platformed, is it? They call it D platformed where they kick you off, I think. He's given up on that policy. Well, there's, there's a clue. There's two of them. There we right. are. So this is this is Thomas the Woodcarver's tip for the week for next week. It's something to do with these two here. Yeah. There we are. So I will leave you. Well, that's where we got to on that. I, I will leave you hanging over the. We're hanging over the. the we're hanging we'll over the river. The there's there's a crocodile. So, Everyone is going to be looking at that crocodile now for the whole a whole week. And there we are. So Thomas the woodcarver is creating much suspense. Uh, with this as well, I know I'm not using a block, but because of the shape of it. That is basically why I'm not using a block because you can't get the block into all of the details. And one thing before we finish off with this one, the spike comes in useful for hooking out those little bits of detail that's got stuck in between. There we are. So that is. I'm hanging over the cliff here. Right. Well, this. Well, it, here ways. we are. We we just finished it off. We last Thomas Woodcarver before he goes. What do, what do you reckon? That's our that's our little Celtic Celtic themed box, just like so. Tops fitting in just about. There we go. We'll just find the right place for that to go in. There we are, and that's what we've made this week. Well, Celtic I themed box. This point in time. It's different. There we are. That's what we made this week for you all to see. Celtic weave surround box. A Celtic and, themed and, and, idea and, and a next, Celtic cross. Also, hopefully, we'll show it next week being shellacked. Yeah, if we remember. But there we are. Simple little demonstration. Thank you all again for joining us. Um, if you've got any questions about that project and that process, remember, get them in the comment section of any of our videos. Hope you all have a great week. I hope you've enjoyed that one because I really thoroughly enjoyed making that one. Um, yeah, haven't made one of those for a while and it proved to be a bit of fun. Thanks again, and I hope you all have a fantastic 